Okay, so first of all, I want to thank the organizers for the kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. So, um, well, this is a talk on the gravity side of the gauge gravity duality. And uh, it's based on um, mainly on, uh, on these papers that um, were done with uh, my, PhD, my students or former students. And uh, well, Pedro Ramirez is a postdoc, INFN postdoc, and uh, Sergio Cacciatori is in Como. Uh, this is actually uh, already an older paper, but these things have become fashionable only in the last few months. Okay, so after a short motivation, um, I will try to give an overview of um, known black hole solutions, analytic solutions in four dimensional n equals two, Faye Heliopoulos gauge supergravity. And I will show you for which class of black holes an exact microstate computation has been done. And after that, I will still uh, focus on the FI gauged case, and I will show you that um, there exist solution generating techniques. And then uh, I will give an application of this to uh, generate, to, to add actually rotation to a given seed solution. And after that, I will um, come to the coupling of hypermultiplets. And this is, again, a topic that has become fashionable recently. So, well, um, if you consider black holes in gauge supergravity, they are typically, but not always, in fact, um, at the end of the talk, we will see a, a counterexample. They are typically asymptotically ADS, so they are relevant for the gauge gravity duality, and they have many interesting applications, complexity equals action, applications in condensed matter physics, quantum phase transitions, quark, gluon, plasma, and so on and so on. But uh, in this workshop, <coughs> we are mainly interested in using exact results in uh, three-dimensional superconformal field series obtained by localization techniques to compute microscopically the entropy of black holes. So that's the main, at least as far as this workshop is concerned, the main motivation to study black holes in gauge supergravity. So um, what are the known black hole solutions in, in N equals two? Uh, abelian FI gauge supergravity in four dimensions. The bosonic Lagrangian is this, so you have here the, the sets are, the, um, are the, the complex scalar fields that parameterize a special scalar manifold. This is um, the Fs are the gauge fields. There's a, a theta term and well, they, they, couple, they couple to the, to the scalars. And then in gauge, in gauge supergravity, you have also a potential for the scalar fields. And here these um, capital Greek indices go from zero to NV, which is the number of vector multiplets. So this is the, uh, well, a theory of gravity coupled only to vector multiplets. And uh, I, J, and so on go from one to NV. And uh, well, you have here, um, a matrix that is called a period matrix, and its imaginary and real part are denoted by I and R that appear in the action here. And um, the period matrix, as well as the metric on the scalar moduli space, this G, and also the scalar potential, they depend on the particular model. And The model is completely specified once you give a prepotential. So the complex scalars, they are written in terms of this holomorphic symplectic sections, the x lambda, f lambda, and all the quantities that I mentioned, that I mentioned they can be specified uniquely 
with a single holomorphic function, the prepotential is f of x. And, well, the only constraint is that f of, f of x must be a homogeneous function of degree two. So as I said, specifying the prepotential is equivalent to defining the full Lagrangian. So this determines completely the model. And now we are interested in the most, well, in black hole solutions in this model. And the most general black hole solution would be specified by a mass, the angular momentum. So we are in four dimensions, we have only one angular momentum. Um, a nut charge N, which is, if you, if you, if you wish, it's a gravitational dual of the, of the mass. Yeah. And then we have N, NV plus one electric charges and NV plus one magnetic charges, the Q lambda and P lambda. And if you want, you can also have an acceleration parameter and possible scalar char charges, but um, this is not what we want to consider here. So if you know that the so-called C metric, the C metric is a, a metric that contains this uh, acceleration parameter. Okay, and well, another uh, interesting point that, that appears in gauge supergravity is, um, well, in the ungauged case, in the asymptotically flat case, uh, at least in four dimensions, the horizon is topologically always a sphere, right? So you don't have many possibilities. But um, in gauge supergravity, it can be spherical. Go back. Okay, um, it can be spherical, flat, or hyperbolic, or actually even more exotic. So you can have a horizon which is a non-compact manifold of a finite area. So it's something like this. And it goes up here and down up to infinity, so it's non-compact, but nevertheless it has finite area, so it has finite bekenstein hawking entropy. So you can also have this. I have many possibilities. Now let us look at, the, at some specific models. So in the, in the first column you have the prepotential, which you see is always the homogeneous function of degree two. So the most simple, one of the most simple ones, that you can write down is this, x0, x1, which is a model with just one vector multiplet. And the most general solution is, is known, which has mass, angular momentum, nut charge, electric and magnetic charges. And it was obtained in this paper by Chao Comper, and um, <coughs> also in, in this uh, written with my collaborators. Um, then a more, slightly more sophisticated model is the so-called STU model, which is this one. And this has uh, three vector multiplets. So this, well, um, this appears in, in compactifications of, if, if you compactify uh, 11 dimensional supergravity on a seven sphere, and then you truncate again, you can obtain this model here. And, um, <clears throat> well, one solution that was obtained in, already in 2009 is this with, that has only magnetic charges and the other parameters are zero. So this is uh, one quarter BPS and this was constructed uh, using the recipe of, of this paper here where all um, supersymmetric solutions of of FI gauge supergravity in four dimensions were classified. So this gives you a recipe and you can, uh, you can take the equations and then that are first order and then try to solve. Um, and then another solution is, well, for, for zero angular momentum and zero nut charge, but all the other parameters non-zero. So you have um, mass, electric and magnetic charges, which again is uh, in this paper by Chao Comper. Well, on, on, this, on this model, actually, there was a lot of literature. Um, another important paper is by, by James Liu, who is in the audience, and collaborators who constructed solutions here with 
um, mass, so non-extremality parameter in the electric charges. Then um, you have the cubic models. So they define what is called a very special Kähler geometry. And here you have the most general solution, almost the most general solution, but only for zero angular momentum, which is in this paper here by Erbin and Talmagi. But they have a constraint, so they, they have the solution only if the very special Kähler manifold is symmetric, and then the, in addition there's a constraint on the charges of the black holes. Then another, well, this is still a cubic model, which is a subcase of what I have just shown that has one vector multiplet, and here you can write down uh, almost the most general solution, well, without nut parameter, but with mass, angular momentum, and charges, which is in this paper here that will appear soon. Something more complicated is this cubic model with this correction here. So this is, again, a, um, a model with three vector multiplets. And if you put this constant A here equal to minus 1, then this is related to Calabi-Aus string compactifications in the ungaged case. In the ungaged case. So this is related to quantum corrections. Um, I think it's not known how to obtain this model in, in the gauged case by, by string compactifications. And also here you can, the most general known solution has one magnetic charge, three electric charges, and the other parameters are zero. And the last is this. This is still a quadratic model, where this eta is the Minkowski metric. So this is what is called a CPN bar model. This bar means that this is the scalar manifold is a non-compact version of CPN. And here you can write down the most general solution. So this is in this paper that will appear soon. Well, also, just note that uh, models of this type here, where n is an arbitrary number, have been considered in the, lit in the literature. But these are maybe more academic and, well, I, I do not bore you with, with details on, on how the black holes are made by writing down the metric in the other fields. But um, just note that in the quadratic models, and only in the quadratic models, typically the metric is of um, what is called carter plebansky type, which is quite simple. <clears throat> so the, the coordinates are T, phi, uh, P and Q, and the metric is completely specified by these structure functions that uh, this P and Q that are quartic polynomials, and R, S, and W that are quadratic polynomials, and the coefficients of these polynomials are then related to the black hole parameters, <coughs> mass, angular momentum, and so on. And also the gauge fields, we have the, the A lambda and the scalar fields, they are completely given in terms of these five functions here. So this is how the metric looks like. And well, if you if you make if you want if you want to make, to make contact with the usual with the usual angular coordinate, so well Q is you can think of Q as a radial coordinate and P as an angular coordinate. And if you set P equals to J cosine theta, then uh, where J is the rotation parameter, then uh, you get the, the usual parameterization. OK. So um, of all these models, uh, as far as I know, a microscopic computation of the entropy was done only for a class of black holes in, in this model with, with this prepotential here, so the, for the STU model. And uh, this class of, of, of black holes is dual to a twisted and mass deformed ABJM theory, uh, whose partition function, the topologically twisted index, can be computed exactly in the large n limit, 
via localization, and it was shown that this reproduces correctly the Bekenstein Hawking entropy of, of these black holes. And a list of references is, of, I think, the first paper on this. Uh, is this here, and they, these authors, they considered um, magnetically charged the PPS black holes with spherical horizons found in this paper here. And this was generalized later um, in 2016 to have um, also electric charges, so to dionic BPS black holes, but still with spherical horizon. <coughs> and then um, in 2017, um, also hyperbolic horizons were considered, <coughs> so BPS black holes with hyperbolic horizons and magnetic charges. So for, for this, this class of black holes, all supersymmetric, um, a microscopic computation of the black hole entropy is available. Okay, so this was, was the overview of, of existing solutions in, the, in these models and, and um, microstate computation. And the next topic I want to talk about is the solution generating technique in, still in this FI gauge case. Um, well, solution generating techniques are a very powerful tool to generate new solutions from a given seed, right? Because, I mean, the, the equations of motion are highly nonlinear partial differential equations coupled, so it's, uh, well, you can either do some guesswork or, I mean, it's very, very difficult to, to, to construct analytically a solution, at least in the case where you have, have also rotation, so it's not static. So this is a very powerful tool, and um, at the base of, of this, you, there is the idea to reduce the action if you have sufficiently many computing killing vector fields to three dimensions, and in three dimensions you can dualize all the vector fields to scalars, so what you get is in three dimensions a nonlinear sigma model coupled to gravity, and roughly speaking, you use then the target space symmetries of this nonlinear sigma model to obtain new solutions to the field equations by starting from a given seed. So for instance, a very simple theory for the Einstein-Maxwell gravity, and if you reduce this to, to three dimensions, you get a sigma model whose scalars parameterize this uh, Bergman space. This is, uh, has, has already been done in um, 88 by Brighton, Lohner, Meissen, and Gibbons. And, uh, well, you can try to do something similar in gauged supergravity, but in gauged supergravity, supersymmetry requires a potential for the, for the moduli, for the scalar fields. So this generically breaks the target space symmetries. I mean, unless you consider flat gaugings, where you have no potential, so typically you have a potential and then this breaks the target space symmetries then, because then in three dimensions what you get is, uh, is gravity coupled to a, to a nonlinear sigma model plus a potential for the sigma model fields. So for instance, in the example that I, I just quoted, um, so try to add a cosmological constant to 4D Einstein-Maxwell gravity at, at the lambda, and what happens is that uh, of the eight SU 2,1 uh, generators, three are broken by the um, potential for the scalar fields, and these three, they correspond to what are called generalized Ehlers, the generalized Ehlers transformation, and uh, two Harrison transformations, which are instrumental in, in generating uh, new solutions from a given seed. And the, the, the residual symmetry is just a semi-direct product of a one-dimensional Heisenberg group and a translation group, R2. 
And this um, residual symmetry, unfortunately, cannot be used to generate new solutions. So nevertheless, in n equals two um, fi gauge supergravity, there, um, there is a solution generating techniques, technique. And it involves essentially the stabilization of the symplectic vector of gauge couplings, the so-called fi parameters, under the action of the new duality symmetry of the ungauged theory. So the original idea goes back already to, to 2013, to this paper of Halmaki and Vanell, and was then elaborated by us uh, in 2016. So what is the basic idea? Well, U, the U-duality is just a global symmetry group of the ungauged theory, and this consists of the isometries of the special Keller nonlinear sigma model, and these isometries act linearly also on the field strength that you have in your action. And if you have uh, purely electric gaugings, then, well, as I said, the scalar potential spoils this invariance. But if you allow also for dionic gaugings, so what dionic gauging means that in order to gauge the symmetry, you don't use just um, the gauge fields that you, that you have in your action, but also mm -hmm. their duals. Right? This is dionic gauging. And if you allow also for dionic gauging, you can recover the whole U-duality invariance, but the price that you pay is you change the vector of gauge couplings and so the physical theory, right? So, where you see this, well, you have here the scalar potential in the fi gauged case written in a symplectically covariant way, right? So this, well, G is the special Keller metric, this, these di's are Keller covariant derivatives, and this L is a symplectic product of G and, and, and this curly V, where G is um, here the symplectic vector of, of fi parameters, and the curly V is the symplectic section. So you see in the, in the electrically, in the, in the case with just electric gaugings, you have only the Gs with the, the lower index, but if you also have magnetic gaugings, then you have also the Gs with the upper index. So this is, the potential can be written in this symplectically covariant way. And, uh, well, let us call this, this group, this U-duality group of the ungauged case, UFI, where FI stands for fake internal, so this is the fake internal symmetry group. And this will act on a solution by mapping it to another solution of another theory, because it acts also on the Gs, so it changes the Fi parameters, so you go to, to another theory, right? Um, but then, okay, if you, you can fix a generic choice of the coupling constant, of the coupling constants G, and then what will be the true internal symmetry group that we call Ui? The true internal symmetry group, it, uh, of the gauge supergravity theory is then just the stabilizer of this symplectic vector of gauge couplings under the action of the U-duality group of the ungauged theory. And this can be non-trivial. So, for example, if you have the pre this cubic prepotential here, um, then you find that the U-duality of the ungauged theory is SL2R to the third. And if you choose your Fi parameters such as to have only electric gaugings, then you find that the symmetry group of the gauge theory is U1 to the third. So there is something non-trivial surviving. And... Uh, let me give you an application on how to use this. Um, in order to, to add rotation to a given seat. 
So start, we start from a magnetically charged BPS black string in five dimensional, in the five dimensional FI gauged STU model, theory with three real scalars. And uh, this, this string has also some momentum along the string. So this is the metric. Well, it has, the, the horizon is hyperbolic. And um, here this, the constant L is just the asymptotic ADS5 curvature radius. The function H is given by this row is the radial coordinate. The function H0 is just a wave profile. So you have a wave, a wave along the string and the wave profile is this H0, which is this function here. And uh, Q0, C and H0 are just constants. So I called this Q because if you compactify the solution down to four dimensions, then this Q0 will be an electric charge. And okay, you have also fluxes turned on. So magnetic, you have magnetic fluxes on this um, hyperbolic space and the scalars are constant. So this was found also already in 2007, the solution. And well, now you can dimensionally reduce along the string coordinate u. Right? So this coordinate u here, dimensionally reduce, and what you get is then a BPS black hole in the in the four-dimensional FI gauged model with this cubic prepotential that has one electric and three magnetic charges. So the magnetic charges come from the magnetic charges in five dimensions and the electric charge comes from the momentum along the string in five dimensions. And now you can apply a 4D duality transformation. So remember the, the surviving um, <coughs> symmetry group was U1 to the third, you can, so you can use this. And then after that you can relive the solution to five dimensions. And what you get is then a dionic black string in five dimensions. And with dionic, I mean, you just have an electric charge density along the string. And now you continue and you dimensionally reduce along the angular, now not along the string coordinate, but along the angular coordinate, this, this phi, and apply again a duality transformation in four dimensions and then relive to five dimensions. And then you get in five dimensions a black string that has both rotation and momentum. So you see you can use this um, surviving symmetry group, this so, so surviving duality uh, invariance of gauge supergravity to add rotation to a given seat. So, well, this is of course a well-known procedure for ungauged theories, right? This is usually how you, how, how you, create, how you create solutions. But uh, in, the, in the gauged case, I think this is the first instance of using solution generating techniques in order to add rotation to a given seed. And the solution, they, well, I do not write a metric which is quite complicated, but it interpolates between what is called magnetic ADS5 at infinity. I mean, magnetic means that the metric is ADS5, but in addition, you have um, magnetic fluxes on the, on the H2 on hyperbolic space. And in the, well, in the near horizon regime, it becomes a deformation of ADS3 cross H2. In fact, you can write down the IR geometry, which is this one, and you see Ah, well, okay, I set all the magnetic charges equal. So P is just P1 equals P3, P2 equals P3, Q0 must be negative, omega is the rotation parameter. And you see that this is um, a deformation of ADS3 cross H2. I mean, for omega equal to, equals to zero, this would be just H2, and this is ADS3, okay? So this is the deformation of ADS3 cross H2. And note that the ADS3 factor, which is what you see in the first line, 
it is it is not uh, the usual the usual metric on ADS three, but well, it it is, but you have to apply a coordinate transformation. It is ADS three written as a Hopf-like vibration over ADS two, in which dt is a null direction. So this this part here is just ADS two, and then you have a fiber over ADS two. So this is if if you want an analytic continuation of the of the usual Hopf vibration, where you write S three as a Hopf vibration over S two. Okay, and. Yeah, well, this, this comes from the momentum along the string, actually. Okay, so in the last part, I want to talk about uh, coupling to hypermultiplets. So why, um, what is this good for? Well, um, DPS black holes in the four-dimensional model with this prepotential, so the STU model, coupled to the universal hypermultiplet, they have recently been attracting much interest in the context of um, <coughs> microscopic computations of their entropy using localization techniques. Uh, in fact, um, what was done um, was to consider BPS black holes in ADS4 cross S6 in massive type 2A. And uh, it is known that they are dual to three-dimensional John Simon's matter gauge series, whose topologically twisted index can again be computed exactly in the large n limit. Um, which was three papers here. And well, this this theory, this massive type two A on ADS4 cross S6, if you dimensionally reduce on S6. So this admits a consistent truncation to um, ISO 7 dionically gauged four dimensional N equals eight supergravity. And this theory here can still be truncated. So this can be further consistently truncated to a four-dimensional n equals two gauge supergravity model coupled to three vector multiplets, precisely with this prepotential, and the universal hypermultiplet. Okay, so this is still another further consistent truncation. And what is um, dionically gauged is a group R cross U1 of the quaternionic hyperscalar manifold, universal hypermultiplet, where this R corresponds to the axionic shift symmetry. I will show you in a moment. And I said that you get a theory that has dionic gauging, so electric and magnetic. And where does the magnetic gauging come from? Well, it comes from, it is induced by the Roman's mass in the massive type 2A uplift, right? So this gives you the magnetic gauging in, in, in four dimensions. And, well, okay, the metric on the, um, on the hypermultiplet moduli space, uh, the, the universal hypermultiplet is this. Um, so you have the, the phi is the dilaton, A the axion, and then you have other two scalar fields. So you see what your gauge is, you have here an axionic shift symmetry. Okay, and then the U1 is a rotation in the Xi, zero, xi upper zero and xi lower zero plane. Okay, this is what is gauged. So the gauging involves these killing vectors here, the A and uh, this rotational killing vector in this plane. And well, the, the black holes actually whose entropy was counted microscopically in the papers that I showed you, they are not known analytically, but one can obtain the near horizon geometry using the symplectically covariant attractor equations of this paper here. So what is known is only the, the near horizon geometry, but this is sufficient. And uh, well, to the theory with hypermultiplets turned on, there are no numerical solutions 
by, for instance, here by Halmagi, Petrini, and Safaroni. They obtained a numerical solution. Um, but question, can we also get some analytical results? I mean, after all, okay, if, if, you, if, if you do a microstate computation and you know only the near horizon geometry, I mean, you actually, you are not sure if there is really a flow from this IR geometry to an ADS-4 in the UV, right? So in principle, you have to check at least numerically if, if they are connected. So can we get some analytical results? Well, we can try to use um, this paper by Mason and Ortin. So they classified all supersymmetric solutions of this of, of four-dimensional n equals two gauge supergravity coupled to both vector and hypermultiplets. So they classified, they obtained some first order equations, and then you can try to, to solve these. And unfortunately, this was done for electric gaugings only, but um, we can still go ahead and see if we find something, something interesting. So, well, for completeness, I give you the bosonic Lagrangian. So, well, you have here again the, um, the, the scalar, the kinetic term for the scalars in the vector multiplets, the kinetic term for the scalars in the hypermultiplets, and these, the gauge field terms you, you saw already before. And then the scalar potential depends now also on the hyperscalars and is given by this expression here where the L sigma are the upper part of the symplectic section, the K lambda U are the killing vectors of the hyperscalar target space that we use to gauge, and the P lambda X are called the moment maps where X goes from one to three. And you have here um, covariant derivatives of the hyperscalars, okay, that are given by this expression here that involve this linear combination of the killing vectors and the, and the gauge fields that you have. And what we are gauging is uh, are only abelian isometries of the, of the quaternionic Kähler manifold. So we, are, we do not gauge any isometries of the special Kähler manifolds parameterized by the sets. So that's why you have here um, ordinary derivatives. Okay. Good. And to keep things simple, but as we will see, yet non-trivial, let us choose a very simple model, which is this prepotential here, so x0, x1, which has, it has just one vector multiplet. And by the way, this is a truncation of the other one. So if the other one was this. And put, put some, some axis equal, and then you get you get this model here, and we couple this to the universal hypermultiplet. And what we gauge are the, the isometries generated by these killing vectors, where the k lambda and the c are constants, and this is precisely, well, apart from the fact that in the 2a um, theory that in the dimensionally reduced, to a theory that I mentioned before, you have also magnetic gaugings, but um, this is, apart from that, precisely the same. So you gauge here the axionic shift symmetry and the rotation in the, in the xi lower zero, xi upper zero plane. Okay. Good. So with this, you get the following scalar potential. It's a function of phi, the xi, and uh, the set that sits in the vector multiplet. And this has a critical point for the xi is uh, zero, z is given by this value here, the phi minus c over k zero, and uh, the value of the potential at a critical point is, is this. So you see, well, z must be positive in order not to have ghost modes in the action, so you need k zero over k one. Uh, to be negative, e to the two phi must also be positive, so c over k zero must also be negative. And then v critical will be negative, so this corresponds to, then to a negative cosmological constant, so you have an ADS vacuum. 
Okay, so using the recipe of this, this paper here, where all the solutions were classified, we obtained the following solution. Uh, this is the metric. You still have a hyperbolic horizon. These are the gauge fields, the two gauge fields. So you see they are magnetic, so you have magnetic flux on the H2. Um, the Villatone goes logarithmically with R, the radial coordinate. The axion is constant, the xi's are zero, and the uh, scalar field in the vector multiplet goes like R squared. So, first of all, note that this, this solution has no free parameters because, because all the, the constants that appear in the solution, the k's and the c, they are already determined by the choice of gauging. Right? So they are, well, constants that appear in the action. They are not, no free parameters of the solution. Uh, you have a curvature singularity in R equals zero, and you have a killing horizon in the square root of minus k zero over c. So this is a true BPS black hole <coughs> with um, non-trivial phi that sits in the universal hypermultiplet and, and also running z that sits in the vector multiplet. You have these magnetic charge densities that are given in terms of these constants that determine the gauging. And in terms of these, you can write the entropy density in this way. And you can easily see that the near horizon geometry is ADS2, ADS2 cross H2. Um, but what is the asymptotic behavior for large R? So you might guess that is, it is ADS4, but it is, this is not true. So for R goes to infinity, the metric goes to this metric here, and you see that in the bracket, this is, ah, I changed the signature, sorry. This is ADS2, and this is H2. But you have a conformal factor in front of the bracket. So the, the UV geometry is conformal due to this conformal factor to ADS2 cross H2. And this is actually very similar to what is called um, a hyperscaling violating geometry. Um, so let me briefly explain what this is. So in D dimensions, a hyperscaling violating geometry has this form. You have, well, okay, the i goes from one to d minus two, and you have here these two exponents, the theta and the z. And uh, the z is what is called dynamical critical exponent, and uh, theta, the hyperscaling violation exponent. And if you scale your coordinates in this way, R, you divide r by lambda, multiply um, the axis by lambda and t lambda to the z times t. Then the metric is not invariant, but it transforms covariantly, so it takes this overall factor of lambda. And uh, let me just mention that geometries of this form have been instrumental in applications of the ADS-CFD correspondence to condensed matter physics. Um, where, yeah, the systems that you, you consider in condensed matter physics are typically non-relativistic, so, so, so uh, a space and time, they scale differently. And, well, actually, our UV geometry ex exhibits a similar scaling behavior. And in order to see this, let us um, introduce new coordinates x and y on the hyperbolic space that are related to phi and theta by this equation here. And then you can write the asymptotic geometry in this way. So now the, the H2 is given in this, is written in this form, well, on the, which is Poincaré half plane. And then if you scale in this way, then you see that um, this metric transforms as the S goes to the S over lambda. So this is very similar. And one, one interesting point is, um, as I sh 
I showed you that the scalar potential has an ADS, an ADS vacuum, but the solution does not go to this vacuum asymptotically. It, instead, it goes to a hyperscaling violating geometry. Okay, let me come to the summary. So in the first part, um, I gave you an overview on known black hole solutions in various models of abelian FI gauge supergravity and uh, showed you for which class um, a microstate computation is available. And then uh, I introduced this solution generating technique still in the FI gauged case. And this involved the stabilizer of the vector of FI parameters under the U duality of the ungauged theory. And as an application, I showed you how to add rotation to a BPS plex string in the five dimensional FI gauged SCU model. And in the last part, we considered the coupling to hypermultiplets and um, Well, we saw that one can construct a BPS black hole that interpolates between ADS2 cross H, H2 in the IR and a sort of hyperscaling violating geometry in the UV. And uh, it would be interesting to, to extend this to include also magnetic gauging to see if one can construct analytically, well, the solution for which um, a microstate computation was done. Okay, thanks.